How you doing guys today I am talking parts I'm just about ready to drop the engine off for the senior to the machine shop I'm gonna have um, I decided to have a lot more work done to the engine than I had anticipated but it is the original engine so I want to make sure that it's as close to a hundred percent one of the things in my last video we talked about the crankshaft I started to polish the crankshaft and up here in the corner I'm gonna put a picture um, showing you that there's some real wear or there's a definite wear mark on the thrust side of the crank pin so what I've decided is not to replace the rod with a standard uh, AEN uh, Babbitt rod so in other words it, it's just the steel rod is just machined to run on the crank what I've decided to do is to upgrade, in my opinion, maybe not size-wise, because it is a little thinner around this area, but I think this is a better upgrade to the motor, which is to go to an AEN-L rod with the bearing inserts. And what I have here are 10 under bearing inserts. So I'm gonna go ahead and have my stock crank or the original crank turn 10 and fit it to this rod right here. The part number of the rod is DA498S1. I did go ahead put the shells in and did some rough measuring and it is 10 under from the stock size or the, the original size. The uh, bearing insert uh, part number is HA139S-10 meaning 10 under. So I'm going to go with a new rod. Uh, we'll have the crank turned and will have the bearing inserts. So that to me is just an overall better, just a better unit. And it's definitely gonna make it um, not 100% like nothing will ever happen, but I think this is the better course of action to go on. The other thing is I got two new valve seats and two new valve guides. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the valve seats and replace the valve guides in the motor. I'll have the uh, machine shop do that. I, I'm sorry, I don't have the uh, part numbers because they're just thrown in this little plastic bag. Uh, with that, I'm um, two new valves, and the part number for the valve is, and it's the same for exhaust and for intake according to the manual, AE758, right? It's eight or is that a B? That's a B, sorry, B. Uh, but two new valves, and then we have two new valve springs which are both the same part number. Uh, let's see here, AF49A, and you can see that this is from 2016. I've had some of these parts a long time, but two new valve springs for that. Oh, just jumping right over here real quick, 10 over piston, 10 over ring set. So we'll have it board 10, and we'll have a new piston in there. Uh, new governor spring. Uh, this is the new Woodruff key that I destroyed trying to take out of the, can uh, out of the crank. We have here, this is a complete rebuild kit for the carburetor. So we're all set there. This here is obviously a Briggs & Stratton style um, gas cap. This was the style that was on my senior when I took it apart. So I had this one in stock. So this is the one I'm gonna put back on it. Have an NOS head for it. So we'll put a brand new head. I don't know if I'm gonna stud the head or I'm just gonna get new bolts and washers for it but we've got a brand new head and in here we have a brand new oil pump. Uh, I do have to still get the, the little 5 8 plugs for the cam. Oh, that's speaking of camshaft, got a new camshaft um, pin. This one here is solid compared to the uh, original being uh, hollow. But uh, as you can see, I just got to lightly polish and take off this little bit of surface rust, nothing too big. Um, and then I got to get the plugs, the 5 8 steel plugs that go on either end of the camshaft. So in general, that's all the new parts that are going in. We're gonna reuse the cam, gonna reuse the oil pump plunger, uh, gonna reuse the lifters um, and the keepers. 
because there's really no reason to change any of that. All that stuff is in real good shape. Uh, I will provide, obviously, the machine shop, the valve seats and the guides. I'll provide them the rod uh, so they can, and then the crank, the block, and the piston. I'll bring the uh, rings with me, but most of the time they don't need the rings, but I'll bring that stuff with me so when I drop it all off, they can do their measurement and magic and get it done. Uh, so with that, let's get everything packed up and let's get over to the machine shop. Oh yes, one other thing I forgot to say. I have a full uh, gasket kit for the engine. I just have to, it's in my Kohler box. So we got pretty much everything. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff in the truck and we're gonna get over there. Okay, got everything loaded up here in the car. We're gonna head over to the machine shop. I'm probably, I'm, I'm not gonna film over there only because um, I've used this guy a couple times in the past. Uh, really good work. Uh, so I'm not worried about that, but you know, he doesn't know that I want to film things So just not gonna do that to somebody that doesn't give me the okay uh, So with that, let's get on over there And there we go engines dropped off to the machine shop talked it over guy that I've used this guy in the past and uh, he does really good work um, when I say the engines that I've gotten from him were dead nuts perfect I mean they were dead nuts perfect um, no need to ring and gap no need no need to you know what I mean it's just it's just really good work so and I really don't expect anything less from him uh, the thing that's kind of sad is He's just over overrun with work. I mean, I've this place has always been a busy machine shop, but this place now, oh my God, the engines were just stacked up everywhere. Um, you know, and that's a factor of a couple things real quick. Um, you know, a lot of the machine shops in my area have gone away. They're, they're, they're gone. And um, that's a product of a couple things. One, you know, the business itself, um, you know, all that Chinese crap that's come in the, in the, into the United States now, you know, people, it, they do the cost benefit analysis and it's just cheaper just to buy a new engine or just do a new, get a new head or something like that. Instead of having a machine shop actually work on it, fix it. Um, and then the other thing too is not a lot of people I'm assuming get into machine shop work, right? So you got a lot of the old timers retiring or dying for that matter because there was a guy in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, uh, motor service, um, Nick. Guy was awesome. It was a great guy. Um, awesome, awesome, good, awesome price structure. The guy, and it was fair. I mean, the guy was really a nice guy and did great work. He passed away. He was in his 70s. He might have been in his 80s. When, and guy, like, died with his boots on in that place. And unfortunately, no one took that machine shop over. It went away. Um, so, you know, there's just a lot of examples like that. So this guy is, like, chuck full. Like, you'd open up the... you open Usually when you open up the door, there'd be like three, four engines, you know, sitting there on the floor that are, just got dropped off. I mean, this place, you couldn't even walk in. The engines were that many. Um... So it's going to be about six to eight weeks for my engine to get done, which is fine because it's in the middle of January. And let's be honest, there is a lot of work to be done on my senior between now and whenever I get that engine back. So I don't really care. Uh, cost structure. I'm not going to say the exact cost structure or the estimate that I got, but it was all reasonable. And when you think about it from the perspective, at least this is how I think about it. And I believe that it's reasonable. Um, you know, it's, it's like, a hundred bucks to have it bored. It's probably going to be about a hundred bucks to have the crank turn. It's going to be a hundred bucks to put the new valve seats and guides in it. And then, you know, I want the exhaust port torn out. I want that stupid thing taken out of it and rethreaded. So, you know, maybe that's another hundred bucks because you, know, you got to pay their time. You know what I'm saying? So that plus the governor's share, you know, I was estimating like 450 and he was right there. So for me, that's that's fine maybe you're like holy sh that's ridiculous um but for me that's just fine I, i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna worry about it especially with um 
especially with the um, the evidence I've had with him in the past being, you know, really good work and all the reviews still being 100% on this guy. So I'm all set. We've dropped it off. We'll see what happens uh, from there. Uh, let's see. That's about it. All right. Next up, I believe, is we're going to start working on the uh, steering box. And boy, do we have a lot of work on that. It's the last big project on the tractor to get it straightened out. Once we get that straightened out, it's really just kind of like the finalizing a couple things here and there and putting the motor together. But that's that's pretty that's pretty simple. That's not a that's not a hard that's not a hard endeavor. So and we've done oh, I don't know at least, man that thing's stupid. Um, we've done we've done so many of those engines. My wife years and years of my wife having this thing up and down up and down up and down the visor it's it's blown it out so that's why and then a little big bump in the road up here causes it to fall but so that's the plan all right guys thank you very much for watching please like share and subscribe and come back again check out the motor let's let's work together on that uh steering box let's get this senior back up and running all right so until the next project you have a great day